Hey, welcome. I'm Gabriel. And I'm Brandon. And this is the Central News Center. So, we're going to kick things right off with Davey on GFC Hockey. Lucas, what were some of your expectations coming into the season? Uh, I knew we lost a lot of guys, but uh, I knew we'd still have a really strong team, and I think we've shown that so far this season. Brandon, what expectations did you have this season? Uh, we always expect to be top contender, and so far I think we've showed that this year. We got no fear, no doubt. All we wanted to do was come in and, and just work hard. And, to kind of see where we end up. I think our expectation of each and every uh, every player was to, you know, put forth their best effort, live up to the uh, the reputation of of Grand Fork Central Hockey, and you know we would just kind of continue to go from there and see where we uh, where where that takes us. Um, we wanted the kids to be able to work together, get a little bit better daily, and uh, hopefully you know, that would lead to good things. We don't have. Uh, Goal is set that you know we're going to win this and we're going to win that. We just want to take it day by day and, and uh, you know expect that we come to the rink daily and, and put in our effort and see where that leads us. Now it's a Leon with the weather. Welcome to the Grand Fork Central Weather Forecast. I'm here to talk about the week from Monday the 19th to Friday 25 February. Monday will have a high of 6 degrees Fahrenheit and a low of negative 9, and we can expect a bit of snow on that day. Tuesday will be rather sunny without snow, with a high of 70 degrees and a low of negative 9. Wednesday will have a high of 50 degrees, and the lowest temperature this week with a zero low. Thursday will still be very cloudy, with a high of 70 degrees and a low of 1 degree. The weekend with Friday on 20 degrees high and 8 degrees low. Similar to Saturday, still very cloudy. As I said, the rest of the week will be cloudy. With a high of 21 degrees and a low of 8 degrees. Sunday will be the warmest day of the week with a high of 22 degrees and a low of 8 degrees. As we can see, there won't be a lot of snow next week, but we can expect that the recent snow will stay since it won't be warm enough for it to melt. And now, back to the studio. And now we're going to go to Jacob, talking about the German exchange program. What do you have for us? What made you decide to come to America? Um, in Germany, I live in a pretty small village, and it got kind of boring over the years, after like 15, 16 years. So I just wanted a change. Then I heard about um, exchange programs to America, and then I decided that I would apply, and then a year later, I'm here. Are there any benefits to you coming to America, like school-wise? Um, not that I know about. Like, I don't think it will like, um, help my school career because I don't think the German schools accept my grades. But I think with the many experiences here and new friends I find, I think it's a benefit for your whole life to spend a year abroad here. Is America different than what you expected and in what ways is it different? Yes, because um, many Germans, like, we have some stereotypes about America. Um, but I found out that most of them aren't true and that America is a wonderful country. Do you think Germany or America, like, do you like being here more than Germany? And if so, like, what makes it? Yes, um, high schools in America are a lot better than German high schools because the high schools here offer sports and activities and just the school spirit, what we don't have in Germany at all. And also, um, I love fast food, and we don't have a lot of that in Germany. <laughs> so in that way, America is a lot better. Yeah. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Guten Tag. <laughs> Freeze. Faith is doing an interview with Officer Kaiser. Okay. I'm going to be hopping in an interview with a journalism student named Nisha about the resource officer. Let's go. What is your favorite thing about Central High School? She answered, but probably the students. Um, I mean, that's probably the answer most people would give, but it's actually true. Um, I come from a small school, Sacred Heart's only like 30 students. So here is kind of nice because you get a range of personalities. Um, a range of lifestyles, a range of upbringings. So for me, it's just fun to talk to students and kind of just get to know, you know, kind of their backstory, where they're from. Because with a thousand students, you have 
a wide range of cities, personalities. Um, so just kind of that interaction is what I kind of enjoy the most about this. What advice would you give to today's teenagers? My advice would be just enjoy the moment. Um, it goes fast, and I'm already out of high school for almost 15 years. And like, life goes fast, so just enjoy, enjoy the moment while you have it. I mean, everyone's trying to move on to the next stage of life, um, but it's, uh, but life goes fast. Is there anything else you would like to add? I guess the main thing is that I want to be approachable. So I'm not here to be the bad guy. And that's kind of the point of me trying to be in the schools is just trying to interact and I want to be here for a positive thing and not just if you get in trouble for drugs or smoking that I'm issuing citations. So don't be afraid to come up and talk to me. Um, if you're having issues with other students, whether it's you think it's law enforcement related or not, just let me know. Because um, I just want to be approachable and be able to help. I mean, any way I can, I'm supposed to be a resource for the school and for the students as much as possible. Not just in a negative way, obviously, as positive as I can be. And now, to wrap things up, we've got Riley Mankey with This Week in History. This Week in History, where I'll take historic events and give a brief explanation. Without further ado, This Week in History! The year is 1945. The conflict between the U.S. and Japan is in full effect, bringing on the Battle of Iwo Jima, the first attack on the Japanese homeland. The island was heavily fortified with vast bunkers and hidden artillery and 12 miles of underground tunnels. Of the 18,000 Japanese soldiers present on the island before the battle, only 200 were taken prisoner. The others are assumed missing or killed in action. The loss of life for Americans was even worth 26,000 total casualties. The American military thought that they could take the island within a week, but the battle ended up taking a month and a half. And there you have it. I'm Gabriel. I'm Brandon. And, and this, this was, was the Central, Central News Center. Center.